Hello everybody. Hi and welcome back to a new video. This one is kind of exciting. It is, I would say, highly anticipated if oh my um, God, you I were know. to ask me. Long time coming. As you can probably tell by the title of this video and how long we've been hyping this video up, we're moving back to New York on January 8th. And we're so excited, we can't wait to bring you along. In this video, we are gonna be covering apartment hunting. Brooklyn versus Manhattan. Savings, how much did we save and how did we do it? Moving in a pandemic. Also, what are the things we've missed most about New York? Why are we going back? What are we gonna be doing for work? These are the things that we're gonna talk about now. If you're new here and are stumbling across this video maybe because you're thinking about making the jump to moving to New York City Hello. yourself, hi, my name is Michelle. I'm Maline. And we're two sisters, roommates, and best friends, typically living and working in New York City, but we actually moved home during the pandemic to save money, to regroup, to be with family during a really scary time, and we've been here pretty much all of 2020, like yeah, since March, March until December, and our lease was up on our apartment, and we ended up putting our stuff in storage, but now now we're going back so you've come at a great time we're going to be documenting our whole process moving back to the city and hopefully this video can be helpful for some of you thinking of making, making the move. move and also fill those of you in who are just curious about what we're thinking feeling and doing with this move to New York City. Follow us on Instagram for any future Q and A's if you are, well just in general, but also if you ever wanna ask us a question for a future video, that is the place to do so. So question number one, do you feel like you're moving away from home all over again? Yeah, so <laughs> it's really funny because I moved away from home from Montana to New York like two years ago? At yeah, this point, 20, in 2018, 2018, and I've done the big old trek across the country before, yeah. leaving the family behind, and it was so difficult the first time, but I feel like it's worse, worse this time. I don't know. I think it's probably because there's a pandemic going on, and things are so uncertain, and we've had such great time with our family mm -hmm. here. I think we're both on the same page, but we're like... This feels like I'm I'm flying the nest all over again. I don't know, I'm torn because like, it's harder in the sense that I kind of know that it's gonna be difficult. I know that it's hard to be away from my parents. Mm. I know that my parents miss us. I know that also traveling is gonna be difficult and, and not really ethical or necessary and not also a financial luxury our family can't afford right now. So there is also these questions like, I don't know when I'm gonna see you, but I am conflicted because although I'm aware of all those things, I would say emotionally and psychologically, this makes so much more sense for me. I think I rushed my move last time and I had no kind of concept of how difficult things were. I was not really in a good mental health space, unlike now. So in that way, I actually think that it's gonna be easier. The next question that we got is, do you worry that it may still be too early slash unsafe to return? Figuring out the timing of things in this pandemic is really tricky. I know that we've had really difficult conversations yeah, about exactly. whether to even go back at all. A lot of people might be confused on the timing of why we're going back now and not just waiting it out for the vaccine to come around or maybe just like taking a little bit more time because COVID is still really like up in the air and we don't really know about like this new variant and all of that really stressful stuff. But when it comes down to it, we came back to Montana in March. And I think that that's a really long time to be living in limbo, not really having like a place to put roots down, kind of everything being up in the air, yeah. having your stuff be in storage, not really being able to be like a full independent adult. And we've debated for a really long time when was the best time to go back to the city. At first it was, we're gonna go back in June, and then it was September, and then it was October, October. and then December, and then, January, so it's the kind of situation that for us, this is just the right decision, mentally, emotionally, financially, we feel really prepared and ready to go back to the city. We feel like that chapter is still unfinished. For this portion of our life, we just really feel called to going back to New York right now. 
the reason why we also stayed through December and we didn't move back earlier was largely because we didn't want to be traveling for the holidays. Back and forth. So the reason that we waited this long was so that we could spend Thanksgiving and Christmas with our family. Mm -hmm. But as far as safety goes, I'm not terribly concerned because nothing much about our lifestyle is changing very much and New York, I think, is doing a great job at handling yeah. the pandemic. Some could even say better than Montana, some be me. I'm, yeah. I'm saying it. <laughs> We're excited to go back and that's what we want for ourselves. Also the sweet, sweet real estate prices, baby. They are looking real good. So we received a plethora of questions about apartment hunting. So we're going to answer as many as we can right now with the information that we have, but a lot is still up in the air. Yes, a lot. So a lot of people want to know about our new apartment. We don't have an apartment. We're traveling, I think, in 10 days and we do not have an apartment locked down yet. This is not as particularly crazy for New York. A lot of the times, apartments should be seen by either you or a friend signing without seeing is incredibly dangerous you could say this about so many places but i do think it's an especially extreme case for new york city because real estate is a crazy business oh and God. photos can be deceiving and, yes also in new york it's really common to find your apartment like two weeks out because things do go so quickly. Oh, so I think yeah. that that's something that I know people have asked me if I'm apartment hunting when it was like November or early December. And that's really kind of impossible because things go so fast. You have to be ready to like move make an right offer, away. fill out the paperwork and like get everything sorted out in basically in weeks, like yeah, in a matter days. of like couple days. You have to wait until like two, three weeks out before you can yeah. even start looking at things because it won't be available most likely uh -huh. by the time that you're there. But we are very lucky where we have a couple of good friends who have seen places for us. Not a huge amount of places, literally two places. Yeah. We've had our friend Gabby and our friend Catherine, Catherine go check out two places for us. Currently, we're still waiting to hear back on those things, but we'll be sure to update you guys. But basically, how we've been apartment hunting, we love Street Easy. That's our love favorite Street app Easy. for finding apartments in New York City. So if it's not, it's not like it's an under underground app. Like no, everybody, everybody knows, knows about also, Street Easy. If you, and we've also prepared, and this was our original plan before we started like putting a few feelers out. We were totally prepared to sleep on some friends' floors and or rent an Airbnb for a week and then kind of regroup. That was the original plan and mm -hmm. also something that we were prepared to do if nothing kind of pans out that we're looking at now. So mostly we are not prepared to settle. Hopefully when we find our place we want to be here for a few years so we are taking it very seriously and prepared to be as like thorough and meticulous with it as we yeah. possibly can even from a great distance. So exactly. Yeah. We got several questions about what neighborhoods we are looking at, Brooklyn versus Manhattan, which neighborhoods within those boroughs mm -hmm. are we looking at? If you're familiar with us, you know that we have lived in Brooklyn before. So where are we at now, Michelle? Well, we had a lot of curious folks asking if we were going to be staying in our old neighborhood, and the answer to that is no. We are not staying in our old neighborhood for many reasons. A lot of our decision making has to do with what we can get for our money and also Bed-Stuy which we which was the neighborhood that we lived in before is a hugely historic black neighborhood and really struggling with a lot of gentrification so we didn't really want to be doing that again and we've learned a lot since our last move yeah and so that was something that we definitely considered as well alongside of course it had to be in our price range. We were really looking around at different neighborhoods and looking at price shifts. We have seen Brooklyn prices either stay consistently high, go up, maybe fluctuate a little bit, but really not a lot is the shift that you're seeing yeah. in Manhattan right now, which is really Huge. interesting. The Manhattan prices are just dropping and then Brooklyn is either going up or staying the same. That was what really got us interested in looking at neighborhoods in Manhattan. We did um, a lot of interest in Williamsburg initially, I think. Because that's where my office was going to be. But Michelle quit, so. <laughs> Y'all know already that I quit my job, so we can essentially move anywhere, live anywhere in the city, so that was a huge plus. I would say that the neighborhoods we were mainly looking at were Upper West and Upper East Side. You guys know how I feel about Central Park. Of course, like, the West Village and Greenwich Village is like a dream to live in. So we would occasionally so peruse 
that area which honestly is so much more affordable now and realistic if you're yeah. if you're willing to make a few sacrifices on like amenities. space and yeah. amenities and things like that having the city at your fingertips is such a huge luxury and i think that's something that we wouldn't have had the opportunity to do really no. if like these huge price shifts didn't happen so a couple questions we got regarding apartment hunting are what to look for when apartment hunting and what are your apartment deal breakers now that you've lived in multiple rentals location yes we wanted to live closer to the city or in the city also commute time before the commute of an hour and 15 minutes was just kind of a part of my daily grind and now after i've taken some space i'm like hmm I don't want to do that no. anymore. Especially at night when I'm doing open mic nights and trying to do stand up, which as you guys know, that's a big part of usually my daily New York life. And it becomes, especially like as a woman, a mm -hmm. bit stressful because walking to the train at night is, is spooky. Mm -hmm. Especially if it's like 10 o'clock, you know? I think from the previous two apartments that I lived in in New York, I've learned that I would much rather have like location over like all of these amenities that I used to have. Like our last apartment, we had washer and dryer in the building. We had central air. We had roof access. We had dishwasher. We had like all of these like very fancy New York things. Yeah, our fridge had some like blue settings. Crazy I buttons. I don't know what they were for. I, I, I still to this day couldn't tell you, but um, that was something that we realized hey, what would actually really impact my life in a positive way? A few apartment non-negotiables, things that are really, really important to us. A couple of those things are natural light. We are big fans of light, as are most human beings. We really <laughs> felt that it was important for our mental health, especially with the pandemic. Exactly. exactly. You know, because you exactly. don't want to be in a dark cave when you're I trying to oh, isolate. Yourself. Absolutely. Our home space has to be somewhere, somewhere, we, somewhere be. we want to be and somewhere where we feel safe and somewhere where we feel like we're at home and we're not like suffocated. So natural light is something huge, huge. for us. I don't need to get my nails done, but I want a bathtub and I want natural light. Like that's yeah. the kind of thing that like, it's like a self care choice. Yeah, and listen, before could we afford a place in Manhattan with a bathtub? Absolutely no. not. No, it's definitely the pandemic. That but it's the pandemic, baby. It. <laughs> Basically, the wealthy uh, people of Manhattan, a lot of them have fled to upstate New York, causing a real estate crisis in upstate New York and leaving more real estate available for people like us the prices keep dropping because nobody is filling that financial bracket, right? Yeah. The economic bracket, because it's not like people who have a lot of money and that kind of flexibility are choosing to move to the city right now. They just aren't. Exactly. They're going, they're going to the countryside. Yeah. So if anyone who's just like, what do they mean? And they don't know about this, this phenomenon that's happening. That is what is happening. We covered it, we got natural light, we got bathtub. We definitely wanted to have a living room space. Now this is something that in some New York apartments there this is not a happen. living room. There's only like a kitchen, kitchen or it's really morphed together. So there's not a lot of space for both. So that's something we really wanted because of working from home. Now working from home, we all know is the new, the new normal. So we needed to have at least like a small table to be able to work or a couch to yeah. work off of. Closets weren't a need, but there needed to be enough space in the bedrooms to set up like a mock closet. Closets for us in terms of each bedroom needs a closet. Wasn't a must, 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 but if that was the case, the rooms needed to be a little bit bigger so yeah. that we could potentially add maybe like a clothing rack or an extra shelving piece, who yeah. knows? It's an and or situation. Hopefully we will have some storage. We do have a clothing horse that we need to put somewhere. <laughs> Clean, decent condition. Yeah. Good Safe vibes, area. not haunted. Yeah. Another thing that was kind of like a bonus, a nice to have was hardwood floors and not like a grubby carpet. <laughs> grubby carpet or like hideous tile. Old lady tile. Like, I don't want the tile. Don't give it to me. I'm not gonna leave someone with the tile. <laughs> we also got a question about our price range for apartment hunting, which I think is also good to put all of this into perspective for anybody who's looking to move to New York City. Our budget for an apartment is anywhere from 1.8K a month to 2.3K a month. Yeah. That is our budget. 2.3K being like high, high for us. We would prefer to be somewhere in the middle. And to give you a nice little comparison, our last apartment was 2,600 a month total for a two bedroom. So we each paid like half of that. And, and 
that is so expensive and something that we absolutely didn't want to do. So I know a lot of people asked if we were going back to that apartment and absolutely not. Um, it was too expensive and we couldn't afford to stay there. So yeah, this time around we're also not going to be getting any financial support at all from our parents, which is, you know, very normal. It's, um, about damn time. <laughs> about damn time. So that is also something to consider. We are being very upfront and transparent about our finances here. Like, this is our budget, we'll tell you how much that we saved. That's all. Just know that we are doing this also all on our own. <laughs> I think that a lot of people who live in New York do get support from their family and I don't think that that's something that people should be shamed for because if you're in that position that's totally fine. It's so expensive, oftentimes entry level jobs don't pay that much. We definitely did receive help in the past but from now on we are completely financially, financially independent, independent so just keep that in mind yes so if you suddenly like why aren't they going out to brunch as much um <laughs> that's why next question do you have different apartment criteria in covid times that's such a good question absolutely absolutely i think we mentioned this before that since we're in a pandemic we did want to be a little bit more selective and careful with where we would be spending our time. Our universe, if you think about it, because yeah. we're not gonna be going out as much. Especially since we're trying to minimize use of public transport, or of, Ubering, of, you know, transport, period. Part of it is just trying to ensure that the area around us is a place that we are okay and happy being, yeah. so that we are also keeping ourselves and others as safe as possible exactly. by living a life that's kind of contained to a certain radius of the city. A question that we do really want to address because we have gotten so many questions about that, I think it was the top comment of one of our last videos, was a question about our savings. Like how much did we save, how did we save, and what would we recommend saving for anybody to move to New York? We've covered this a little bit in the past, but I just want to make sure that here is some concrete, you know, like info. This is what we're telling you. This is what we would recommend. Exactly. This is the advice that I think we wish we would have had yeah. when we left our hometown. I would recommend saving as much as you can. Oh my God. Just to put it vaguely, as much Never enough money. as you can. <laughs> But to put that in a number format for anybody, I would recommend $7,000 to $10,000. These are the minimums that we're talking <laughs> yeah. about. I don't want anyone to just save like seven and be like, and I'm good to go because Aileen said so. Um, we don't know because I also don't know like your rent, your income, job, your income, any bells and whistles that you want to add to your life, maybe eating out or classes or whatever. I don't know what your situation, situation is, but for anybody who's maybe in my position, just to be very transparent with you guys, I have currently $11,000 in my savings. And I am, yes, you got that right. I am currently a bakery worker, unemployed actor, and micro-influencer. <laughs> so that is how much I would recommend for somebody maybe in my position. And that is exponentially more than I was recommended to save when I first went to New York. But let me tell you, God damn, did I wish that I had saved more money. Oh I God. wish that people had told so me fast. to save more money. Being a burden on your family or having to ask for money from your parents, that is gonna psychologically wreck you. I know it wrecked me. I felt constantly guilty mm -hmm. and like a failure right off the bat because I didn't have the means to support myself. So that's my transparency. Michelle, how much did you save? I have nearly $20,000 saved and that is from basically March until December. A lot of people asked how we saved. Basically, I just put $2,000 in my savings like every single month because I was living at home, which is a huge luxury, huge I will admit. Huge luxury. A lot of people don't have that situation. So we weren't paying rent, we weren't really paying bills. We do have our storage unit fee that we had to pay every month. And then of course we would do some like light grocery shopping or light we thrifting. would do some light thrifting or order out food or sometimes go get coffee and an acai bowl. So there were like little fun things that we would do, but we were in a situation where we were able to save a lot of money. We didn't really shop. We never went out to no. eat. Tricky to say how did we save this money because it's not There's like no we secret. had a savings plan. Like basically it was just we moved home 
Yeah, you know, that's a lot of people wanted to really do like it. budgeting tools and apps. No, we did not have that. So the app was my banking app in which I used to put all money into my <laughs> savings account every single time I got paid. It's like I probably could have done a lot more like shopping. Yeah. Or maybe we would have done like a, a Yellowstone road, road trip or like rented a camper and like done a cross country trip or something like that. But like we made these like minor sacrifices honestly in order to set ourselves up for success because when you rent in New York you do have to pay first and last month's rent and sometimes security deposit, security deposit sometimes more fees that are just like they just show up yeah um, they're just like to take this apartment off the market we're gonna charge you this like five hundred dollars all of these things add up so quickly so if you're in a position where you're able to um, make little sacrifices here and there in order to help you in the long run um, that's that's preferred also everyone's situation is different if you do have family that's like we want to help you throughout your first year then that's grand Go ahead. if you have an amazing like high power job and you're just like um i'm not worried in the slightest about money good for don't, you yeah, don't more power it. to you <laughs> but this is a situation for moving without really a job set up Um, some people have asked us what we're gonna do when we go back to the city. Um, some people really want to know what's going on with me. Um, <laughs> I don't know why it doesn't change. Um, it's still the same. It's still the same. While I've been here, I have had multiple streams of income. So you guys have noticed we have I've had quite a few sponsorships. I get money from AdSense from YouTube. I get money from my social media job that I work as well, which is some freelancing work that I do. And then I also get money working a full-time job at a bakery in town. Those are my four streams of income. I get money from all of those every month and it's been a massive, massive help going forward. I hope to supplement the loss of the bakery job with another customer service job and supplement with also hopefully some freelance work as well. Realistically, I think that finding a full-time job in customer service is gonna be really, really hard in New York right now. So I'm hoping to supplement a part-time job with digital work, um, freelance video editing is hopefully what I'm gonna be getting into. It's what I've had the most opportunity in so far. I have a couple contacts there. If you're wondering how I'm gonna be staying afloat, that is how. Don't worry about me, I'm not. Um, <laughs> only sometimes in the night. And if I wasn't spooked by the night ghouls, it would mean that I wouldn't have a confidence. Yeah, I wouldn't have a grasp on reality. <laughs> Obviously, I will continue to pursue acting and comedy as those opportunities arise and as things kind of get back to normal. But for now, that is what I the have. Um, kind of similarly with me, uh, I have all of those same streams of income with AdSense and sponsors. And then, a lot of you know, I quit my job recently, so I've been doing freelance social media work instead. And I do have a couple clients currently and then a new one that I'm planning on taking on in January and a kind of on-call work situation as well. So it's kind of up in the air which is scary for moving back but I have enough savings that even if I take a hit during the first month when I'm still getting adjusted everything will be fine. I mean like I have this $20,000 cushion and I fully intend on using it while also being proactive about getting more clients and establishing my own little business, which is very exciting. Hell so yeah. uh, basically we're good and uh, no need to fret. It. Yeah, that's how we did it. We bought ourselves a two-parter. What are you most excited about and what are you most nervous about when moving back to the city? Independence and having my own apartment again. I'm almost 26, y'all. Like I'm so excited to have my own space in potentially one of my favorite neighborhoods in Manhattan and I'll get to live this new and improved New York City life, which I'm yeah, very excited yeah, about. Take everything that you've learned and just do everything differently. Um, and I'm most nervous about money and mental health. <laughs> the two M's. I don't know, I guess, I guess some kind of permanence, right? Permanence allows you to plan, it allows you to, you know, buy new curtains and not be like, how am I gonna get these home, you yeah. know? So I'm excited for that kind of thing. I'm excited to put down roots. I'm really excited to go back to some friendships that we left kind of just know, you know, 
going on. It does feel a little bit like you're putting play again on like the rest of your life. Like, and you can make a dentist appointment and know what neighborhood to make that dentist appointment in. And you don't have to worry about like, oh, well, I ever see this dentist again? I can't, I can't say. say. It's just the simple things. What are you most nervous about? Uh, nervous about? Well, money and mental health. I mean, isn't that always what people are nervous about? Like, I've never been financially independent before, and um, I'm nervous about that. And of course, I'm worried about mental health because our mental health was garbage. Our um, mental health was plummeting. Yeah, so I'm obviously afraid of like, slipping backwards, but I have a lot of confidence and faith in us, and I think that we're yeah. gonna do great. That leads into our next question very nicely. How have you changed since the last time you lived in the city? New mindset, question mark. I'm not miserable. <laughs> I, I don't know if this is super annoying and cheesy, but I feel like a completely different person at the end of this year than I was at the beginning. Yeah, we went back and watched our 2020 resolution video. Who are they? I don't know her. I don't, I don't <laughs> recognize that girl in the slightest as shit as 2020 has been and horrific for so, so many people. people. I think that we have done so much growing in this really painful time in the world and I'm really proud of, the, of how far we have come. The issues that we had in our previous New York lifestyle, for example, like we were unhappy at both of our jobs. We were not making enough money at both of our jobs in New York. We also were paying too much money for our apartment. We also felt isolated in a neighborhood that was very far away from our jobs, our, our friends, friends, people we our knew. Hobbies. For myself, this like nine to five grind in New York City was really putting a damper on my soul. So yeah, for me, depression was putting a damper. On yeah, my soul. <laughs> but also your two bus bus like well, your two yeah. bus commute where the bus would ever show up was well, also yeah. and then a bummer. It was quite a bummer. <laughs> but that also like. <sighs> I could go on a whole rant from that talking about how public transport and the MTA specifically is underfunded and it puts people who are in the lower economic bracket in a vulnerable position where they are less likely to succeed because you have less hours in the day because you have to be constantly adding in this time to like, oh, you, uh, you have to get to work on time. There are bigger systems at play here. People talk about that when they talk about the cycle of economic disenfranchisement and poverty, that plays a part. Unreliable oh, transport systems, that plays a part. And I am so privileged to be able to be like, I'm just gonna move to a different neighborhood. Yeah, People absolutely. don't have that, that people option. don't have that option. No. And it's upsetting when society lets them down like that. I think that's a really important disclaimer because talking about money and neighborhoods and apartments, it does bring up a lot of points about privilege that I think are important yes. to acknowledge, especially in New York City with all the gentrification and redlining issues. Yeah, I mean, there's this amazing quote in Little Flyers Everywhere. You didn't make good choices, you had good choices. Mm. And I think that that's really important because although right now we are making choices to change the stuff that was affecting us mentally, a lot of people don't even have that, the ability to make those choices. Oh my God, yeah. So true. And I, I don't think that like we need to like sit and feel guilt and shame, but there you have to have some sort Acknowledge. of acknowledgement. It's yeah, of what a blessing that is and how other people just don't have that. So Okay, so the last question is what's the first thing you two are going to do once restrictions are lifted in the city? I think I mean I have two options. One is, I can't wait to go to brunch again. I used to go to brunch every weekend, which one, mm, uh, with what money did I do that? <laughs> and two, I can't even imagine that because I haven't been to brunch since March. And <laughs> boy do I miss it. I can't wait to get like a nice little booth with our friend Gabby. Gabby. Get some pancakes for the table where we could share them and don't have to worry about droplets. Yeah, we were droplets. We didn't, we didn't think about those kinds of things. I used to eat an orange on the subway. And yeah. I was just like, this is it. I, not that I'm looking forward to eating an orange on the subway. Um, yeah, I'm excited to eat an egg that I didn't have to prepare myself. You know, yeah. that's good. what a rush. I'm sure you're really excited about the, like, comedy and theater scene coming back. Yeah, that's a big one. And comedy and theater are both aspects of my life that I miss really quite a lot. Like I didn't used to miss them when I was um depressed, but that's because that's, that's what because depression does depression to you. Is. And now that I feel so much more clear headed, I'm like, oh God, I miss that thing that I used to do. Like tell jokes in the dark. <laughs> God, I can't wait to go to a Broadway show again. That sounds, you imagine? Like a treat. that sounds like 
maybe I would be overstimulated. <laughs> I think my brain might explode. <laughs> no, and my last thing is, I'm really excited also to like go dancing. Like, We've lived a very pandemic friendly lifestyle pre-pandemic and uh, we're we, excited to make that go away. I'm excited to put my dancing shoes on. Also my flirty shoes on. I don't know if uh, flirty shoes are a thing, but if they are, I really want to wear them. I'm excited to want to date I'm again. I'm excited to be and young. not be scared. Yeah, not be scared of dates. Well, you know, woman, you're always a little scared. There's so much also to New York and I can't wait to be in New York when things kind of start I know. Going back to normal. Can you imagine I like can't. the joy in the air? Thank you so much for all of your questions. And I hope this helped. If you have any additional questions, feel free to leave them down below. We I'll can always them. address them in the moving vlogs, which yeah. sure there will be many. So make sure so to subscribe, subscribe if you like moving content, Arm and hunting content, decorating. You know, it's gonna, it's gonna be a wild, it's wild be ride. So Good. I am so excited. Scary, but good. And thanks so much for watching, and don't forget to follow us on Instagram. Follow us on Instagram for real time moving updates. She's Michelle. I'm Aline. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye. Bye. We are going to be covering apartment hunting. Hunting. <laughs> apartment hunting. Clearly, she needs to go back to the East Coast. Jesus Christ. Luxury Before. and something that we. Sorry. I mean, stop sorry, interrupting sorry. I know. I'm so sorry. You're being such an interrupting goat. But <laughs> that are not anemones. Amenity. <laughs> that are not. That are also not an uh, amenity. Amenities. That are also <laughs> not. That are all like sea anemone. <laughs> Can you believe that we're gonna be like mm. the next video we post or the video after that might be.